I'm Alan Robarge, a relationship coach. Welcome to the New Love Addiction, where we are not talking about addiction. We're talking about attachment injuries and healing attachment trauma. I want to try to get to the heart and the core of this dynamic and the dilemma, the painful reoccurring dilemma of having relationships struggle uh, repeat itself and you just cannot quite resolve uh, a relationship that feels like it's not working. There's a history, the dynamic I'm referring to is there's some history where there's a great limitation around emotional honesty, emotional connection, emotional disclosure, emotional harmony, emotional attunement. And there is a limitation uh, on one or both of the partner's um, abilities, a limitation to know how to enter emotional awareness and emotional exchange to offer presence and warmth uh, beyond just love. We're not talking about having a, a, you know, a general kind loving feeling. We're, we're talking about a very um, astute, sophisticated skill to drop into an emotional awareness. It's like a sixth sense. It is a, it is a, a form of knowing of how to respond and to maneuver in a rhythm of a back and forth give and take to pay attention to your partner. Your partner reciprocates and pays attention to you and you can respond. It could be verbal, it could be through touch, it could be through a glance of your eyes. It's these very, these micro moments of interaction and how it translates in, in the most obvious sense or the most um, uh, tangible sense through language is to have a partner, someone who is asking you questions about yourself, someone who is inviting, cur you know, leading from a place of curiosity to want to know your experience and can anticipate what your experience might be through the function of empathy. And by imagining what your experience might be, would take a risk to invite you sort of it, it's a way of um steering the conversation um um sort of uh, massaging the conversation in such a way that lets you know that they get your experience they could imagine what you're going through and to either ask a question or to make a statement or a comment that feels open-ended so that there is this either very obvious invitation or the conversation lends itself to where you feel invited to share more, to share yourself. Imagine that both partners, it's, it's as if, if you're not literally saying the word yes, but it's through the body language, it's through the right types of questions, it's through the smiling and looking into your partner's eyes and just genuinely and generally being present. And, and when the, your partner is present and when you're, when you're present back, there's a flow that is, that is happening. So that's the ideal. That's what we want. And if perhaps you have a history where in your past, assuming in your family, or a succession of relationships in your adult life where you did not get this and and it's not it's not like you just didn't get it it's that you did not get it to such a degree that your sense of self and your developing self was impacted wounded hurt shut down and the opposite of what I just described to have that emotional attunement and to participate in this exchange is the feeling of being invisible, the feeling of being non-engaged, the feeling of you are just a shell and you're empty 
and there is no real relating going on, but you're simulating relating. So you could be out to dinner, but you're not really connecting emotionally. You're talking about uh, you ordered something on Amazon and it arrived and you're talking about you got to pay the light bill by next week and you're talking about so-and-so has a birthday party and are we going to the birthday party and then we're you know we're at a restaurant and we're eating a sandwich and we're talking you know, saying oh are you going to eat your pickle so all of these everyday nice little things uh, you know certainly are very important as far as having an ordinary experience or the the the, the common experience of just interacting but this couple you whoever me when we're in relationship if there's not a dropping down into a deeper level of connection through being able to ask your partner and to be asked hey what's going on with you how, how are you no 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 how are you really doing or remember the other day when you said XYZ, that has really stuck out in my mind. That is really interesting and I've been thinking about that. And I was curious to know, you know, when you said XYZ, what does that mean about, you know, how you feel about whatever. The conversation is off, the conversation is going. So let's, let's say you have not had this. So, it's not just shrugging your shoulders and going, oh, well, I don't have that. I never had that. What this means is that for many people, it has coded itself, this lack, this wound, this, this, this being denied emotional connection for years and years and years in your family to not have the rich depth of emotional awareness um, emotional presence to be denied that has actually coded itself in such a way that it triggers an alarm system there is anxiety there's some panic there's a sense of oh wow this per this is scary stuff now because we're in relationship we're talking but we're really not talking there's the the person i'm with does not want to know my emotional experience the person i'm here with does not really want to know not only what's going on with me but as a result they don't want to know me so you're in your family and you're getting the message of i don't really want to know you i love you but i don't know you I love you, but I'm not going to ask you who you are. I love you. I don't know how to inquire to know what's really going on in your world. And so there's a sense of pleasantries or assuming your family was, you know, relatively nice or okay people. There's this sense of pleasantries and, you know, if, if you're fortunate enough where your basic needs were met or even above and beyond your basic needs where, you know, you had, you had some nice things growing up. But nonetheless, your family, your parents, your mother, your father, whoever it is, outright ignored you emotionally. And chances are they did this very subconsciously. They're totally unaware that they're doing this. And most likely they uh, have had it done to them as well, that their parents were had a limitation of being emotionally available. So here you have this history of not being engaged and invited to be known. So what does this do to a person? It can create confusion around your sense of self, your identity and your worth. It can create confusion around your lovability and whether or not uh, your needs and desires to be loved are uh, valid or if they have worth. This can confuse your voice with regards to either you protest a bit much and you're very vocal about demanding attention or the opposite takes place where you lose your voice and you're sort of a doormat 
and you just uh, you, you don't know anything any different. This could also turn you into a fake shell of a person where you're more overly identified with your presentation and the facade of how you're just showing up in the relationship because you don't really, you're, you have not been trained to, uh, no one has demanded substance of you. So you, you more uh, have become overly identified with your external presentation and, and the shell of who you are. The experience of non-emotional interaction makes you feel like a shell. And then also to stay in this type of non-emotional relating means that you, you continue uh, to show up, you're just a shell. And this impacts our sense of self to where we feel fake. You know, I'm a fake person. I'm just not really real. I'm not really here. We're not getting back information. We're not getting an engaged uh, other person. You know, in the example, I, I originally was talking about a, a, a couple scenario or, or a romantic relationship scenario. And in this moment, thinking of a parent, you're with your parent. And if your parent is not interacting, you know, after two years, three years, five years, seven years, age 12, age 14, age 17, age 22, age 34, I mean, at some point you realize that you're in relationship where you're not seen, you're not valued for being you, and the parent is not asking you to be to have more presence, to share or reveal yourself. So here's the challenge. I just set this all up to, to point out, to acknowledge part of the ongoing chronic struggle is this is like a riddle. So it's a riddle to solve this within your family as you're in your current adult self to figure out how the heck do I stay in a relationship with certain family members if this is the dynamic. And nonetheless, the dynamic is not changing or we recreate this with adult partners in romantic relationships and we find ourselves in the same dilemma. So either way, the challenge is that we are going to be looping around a impossible scenario where we know we cannot continue on like this, but nonetheless, we are going to work very hard to try to stay in relationship. And our, our rational, logical mind or a, a, reasonable, a reasonable counter argument, a reasonable response to this is to say, well, why can't I just accept, I'll use a parent, the example of a parent. Why can't I just accept my mother for who she is? I'm gonna accept that, that it's obvious that she has some limitations on the for for how she engages emotionally and we're just going to say well can i can you all of us can we accept that and to acknowledge the parents age again if i'm using an example of the mother can we accept that at the mother at my mother's age is there an acceptance of that this is how she relates this is what she knows this is what we've been doing for years and she just doesn't have that skill. Now at face value or, or the initial hearing of that response makes total sense. And it sounds as if we are appealing to your compassion. We, uh, it sounds like we're appealing uh, to just having empathy that we, we don't need to get bent out of shape that the parent cannot deliver the level of emotional engagement that we know is possible and that we know that we want and that it does initially sound like that that is an act of forgiveness and kindness and compassion to say well that's just where my mom is at that's just where my dad is at that's just where other family members are at that's just who they are and and i'm going to consciously choose to say that uh, it's going to be disappointing for me. I know that I'm going to go without emotional engagement, uh, but nonetheless, they're relatively okay people and I'm okay being in a relationship. And again, we could apply this to a romantic partnership, the same thing. You're with this person and you're trying to, you know, go the, the riddle, the confusing thing is to keep going around in circles saying, well, how do I accept him or her? 
how do I accept this is just who they are? They are emotionally withdrawn. They are emotionally avoidant. They have some limitation to, to offering um, engagement. And so it makes sense that we would try to um, come at it from a practical, rational place and say, well, that's the way it is. And am I able to accept this? Are you able to accept that? My answer to this question and why we are perpetually stuck in the cyclical looping, that's sort of redundant to say it that way, why we are stuck looping in this place is because it's not ours to accept and there's nothing to accept when the actual interaction that I'm referring to is toxic, is painful. And um, I once had a client refer to this as accepting poison. You're taking on poison and you can't say, well, it's just a little poison versus a lot of poison. Poison is poison. You are accepting poison. Uh, what I mean by this is that to have a history where you were wounded and your brain and nervous system are coded to experience a... Uh, painful um, rejection of your sense of self when there's a consistent lack of emotional connection, emotional engagement, that this hurts you. And for many of us, this is physical. You could feel shut down. You could feel rejected. You could feel ignored to the point that it drains your energy. You're disempowered. Um, and that you feel, um, it's just so painful. There's a, such a, a painful place uh, to get to, to acknowledge this. So one reason why we cannot talk ourselves into accepting that this is just who the person is, because it's like saying, well, to stay in relationship in this place, and I have to accept that I'm going to be letting in the toxic poison it's still at my expense. That's disempowering. And in order to do that, I need to betray the thing that I know. And what do I know here? I know that I deserve more and I know that I have a rich emotional life that uh, as a human being, I um, deserve the respect and it is an act of love to be received for someone to actually want to know the fullness of my experience. Now, if you, if a person, I'll speak for myself, if I did not have this history of an attachment injury, then it totally makes sense to say, well, okay, I will, I will choose, you know, by right of the situation, I can uh, allow myself in a mature sense to accept that this is the reality and I'm just going to accept it as it is. I propose what is the reoccurring hook or the place that we keep returning to why we, we are, this is still an unresolved, chronic, hot, um, provocative place and, and, and that we feel suffering very viscerally. And we can't accept it because it's, we have never had it. We, the whole reason why we're here, meaning the whole how we've ended up with having an attachment uh, injuries that have coded themselves as attachment trauma is due to a history of being ignored and neglected and emotionally um, emotionally not paid attention to. And so to accept, quote unquote, accept that, to accept that you're no longer, you know, that you're part of, you're colluding with your own history of abuse. And this is why we can't accept it because we are still trying to make sense of what had happened. So it's very possible that you could accept the history, accept the past and accept what had happened and then you logically, uh, intellectually understand the dynamic. But it is going to be wildly challenging. It is very difficult to then say, well, let's continue, let's continue to do more of the same. 
the parent is not changing, the family member is not changing, or your partner, your romantic partner, your husband and wife, he or she is not changing. But yet you're going to convince yourself to sign up to be in the same toxic, dysfunctional, unhealthy dynamic at your expense where you get to be ignored, which means you're going to feel belittled, which means you're going to feel disempowered, which means you're going to feel devalued. And physically, it's going to at times be very hurtful or, or, or trigger anxiety around this uh, uh, chronic feeling of needing some connection and then you get to be labeled the needy one you get to be labeled you know someone who's failing to just accept the situation as it is the last point here that I want to make that is one more uh, one more acknowledgement of the impossible create there's an impossible impossibility for resolution in this dynamic if the other people are not willing to participate in relationship and that to stay in some form of relationship is at your expense and hurtful and the reason why it can be so challenging to accept to say to say well this this is certainly not ideal this is not what i want but, but let's go ahead and accept what level or form of relating currently exists with this family member. Let's, let's just try really hard to accept the type of relationship that you do have in your marriage. And, you know, it's not ideal, but oh well, let's, you know. The reason why we can't do that is because on a you know potentially daily basis weekly but you know it's a chronic grief your it in the acceptance is not a neutral decision in your mind it is reinforcing a active grief an active loss you know that something is being lost and that a grief in the sense of a provocative sadness and some people can experience it as a provocative depression. Some people can experience it as a provocative anger, um, a, a, a ongoing irritation, that there can be a good attempt. You set the intention to say, well, I'll just accept, you know, the, the phrase here that we often hear is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna accept the crumbs, I'll accept these crumbs and i can make the most of it i'm just aware you can't you know the parent is not going to change the partner is not going to change and nonetheless for whatever reason we're going to stay in this kind of dynamic can i force myself to be okay with that and my response is no you can't because it's letting in the trauma energy which is like a form of poison and it's reinforcing a very immediate grief that is palpable and that you can feel this loss that you know something is being lost. And what is being lost is at your expense, that you're signing up to, to, be, to continue to not only observe how others deny engaging you, but now how you're choosing to deny yourself the possibility to be engaged. And that is a self-betrayal. And we can really lose our minds in this place. If the whole idea of, of self-betrayal is annihilation and why exist or how can I exist? And this is why people experience this as life or death, the, the urgency, the intensity to see me, no, really see me, know, know me. I mean, I want you to know me. The stakes are so high and that if, if you have a lifetime of being denied the um, presence of someone, uh, being denied someone taking the effort to share a presence to, to drop into knowing you. 
you are going to feel that something is missing that is paramount to a life or death situation. And this is why uh, the degree of mental health challenges are so closely linked or so obvious when it comes to attachment injuries and attachment trauma. The, the grief is uh, real. The depression is real. Uh, the ongoing chronic anxiety is real. Uh, the consequences of living in hyper aroused state around chronic stress and the hormonal imbalance that that creates and then how that invites a whole host of other physical ailments and imbalances in your health and just your immune system alone taking a big hit. Um, so to just try to negotiate in a rather nice way to say, well, I'm just going to accept the situation. Not only is that a tall order to, to a tall uh, or a big pill to swallow or a tall order to fill, I'm mixing up my metaphors, but I propose that it, it's actually a no win non choice. It's, it's not really a solution. And we do not need to beat ourselves up or, you know, oftentimes if we are able to, nego to, to attempt to negotiate this at all with a partner, attempt to talk to a parent, say, please parent, please see me, please let's really practice a different level of healthier relating where there's an emotional investment different than we've ever had before. And that oftentimes a defensive response, you know, your, your partner, your husband or wife, you know, might say, well, why can't you just accept me as I am? Why can't you just accept the situation as I am? It, that, that plays into, that, that implies that you're doubting, that you're lacking. That implies that you're lacking compassion. That implies that you're lacking some altruistic empathy to, you know, fully accept something or, or just forgive life for, you know, being dealt this dynamic. That is a deflection and that is confusing and, and if you already struggle with an insecure sense of self, um, you're going to spend some time looping and going around in circles uh, trying to convince yourself that you're supposed to have you know, some, some deeper level of compassion and understanding like why can't you just accept it as it is. And I'm proposing my response is because there's, it's not your job to accept being rejected. It's not your job to accept the consequence of being emotionally ignored. Uh, what you can do it is your job to have a voice to say that this hurts you. It is detrimental to your health and it is in no way a sustainable form of being in relationship. So either you're trying to convince yourself that this is a long-term viable way of being in a relationship, or you have a parent or a, you know, an adult parent, as an adult, you have your parent or you have, you have your, your spouse and, and who's trying to convince you that, well, this is just the way it is. And I'm just pointing out to you that what that means is you're negotiating, accepting a no-win situation where it's at your expense that's going to impact your sense of self and continue to perpetuate how you're being denied emotional warmth, generosity, connection, curiosity, attunement, harmony, whatever word that we want to use. And that's a no-win situation. That's not fair to you. And it's not because you're lacking compassion. It's because this whole dynamic, this whole thing is faulty. This whole dynamic, this, this, this system that I'm describing right now is unhealthy and it is wildly, wildly manipulative and hurtful to the person on the receiving end, to the person who has an awareness, a sensitivity that there, that there is a withholding going on. And this withholding is painful stuff. So empathy to you. I hope that this was helpful. I tried to map out very specifically, sort of set up how this is, is playing out in our lives. And then also uh, really p 
pinpoint and take us to that place where we keep looping and looping and looping of, why can't I make this work? Why can't I make this work? Oh, it must be me. I'm not accepting reality. I'm not accepting the other person. I'm not accepting the limitations. I need to have more, I just need to accept that this is how my parent is. I just need to accept that this is, you know, how my spouse is. And I'm telling you that you can work all that you want for this acceptance and label it as compassion. You're simultaneously taking on poison. You're simultaneously reinforcing dysfunctional relating at your own expense. You're simultaneously cultivating more trauma mind and you're betraying yourself the same way that you have been betrayed for years by the same people that you're trying to get their attention from today. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you like this video and or want to hear others just like it. And to learn more about me, uh, please go to alanrobarge.com. Thank you.